Hi everybody, this is Gary Dean and this is our weekend video report for Sunday, January 10th, 2016. Hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend and let's get started. So um, I took another position on uh, Friday. We're a little bit underwater, not not a whole lot. I took it right around when uh, the S&P was at the 1925. It closed at 1922, so no big deal on that. But the you know what really happened was uh, we saw institutional buying on Wednesday and I showed that on the uh, you know the money flow chart and they got caught on the wrong side so a lot of them unwound their positions they uh, you know they, they we saw a pretty uh, significant drop on uh, Thursday and Friday and basically it you know the way that I looked at it is people just didn't want to go into the weekend uh, exposed because this market has been pretty weak and I'm not uh, I'm not overly bullish on this market at all. I do expect that we are going to get some type of, uh, say, cleansing <laughs> to the upside, meaning that they're going to wash out uh, shorts. And a lot of it has to do with just uh, everybody's kind of leaning in that direction right now. Um, it's it's risky, definitely, but we've seen these bounces when they do happen. I mean, watching the S&P run 100 points in a matter of a few days is, is becoming the new norm. So um, I'm kind of thinking that is pending right now. The one really thing that I would say is a little bit uh, concerning is on Thursday and Friday, as we saw the, that big drop, there really was no um, institutional buying, meaning there was no big block volumes or uh, the money flow. So it doesn't mean that it can't move higher without that it's just a matter of i i to me it, it's it's better to see when you see the buying coming in because uh typically in the past when we you know when we see big upticks or block volume coming in uh with the institutions uh some type of rally follows um I, it looked real good on wednesday when uh we saw the you know the block volume coming in with the institutions but like i said they uh they got caught on the wrong side and a lot of them unwound their positions and that gets exaggerated uh to the downside and we've seen that so again i'm not overly bullish on this market i just do believe that we are uh we, we, we have some type of short covering rally or let's just say cleansing of the shorts that are pending. It could happen as soon as tomorrow. Maybe they wait until Tuesday. You know, we have to kind of wait and see. But in any case, I do believe that that is pending. And that's really the trade that I'm looking for. So daily chart. You can see we went a little bit of, uh, below the the seventy eight percent retracement. I think this is nineteen uh, nineteen twenty three is a seventy eight actually, but we're here. Um, we're getting pretty. You know, we're we're at levels that once we've gotten here on the SMI, we've seen pretty good bounces take place. So the negative divergences. This had me risk. You know, not really liking the long side up here. We do have a little bit of a bullish divergence in place and we are at some support so if we take a look at the weekly chart because i showed you this and this was that trend line that i had i had said has been in place for for a very long time and you can see we closed a little bit below it but this is the support zone and and this has been you know around for for quite some time so we're right in the middle of support right here um it, it's like i said it, i'm not really bullish on the market but Typically, you know, with these big candles, sometimes we get a drop, but then back up again. But in any case, we're, we typically, after a big, big washout to the downside with a huge candle like this, and this is the worst open that the S&P has had in history uh, of a year, but what happens is we typically get some kind of reflex bounce. So if we look at a 60-minute chart, this is where I was saying the uh, 1923, this still could be, I mean, as is ugly as this tape has been it's still i mean from these lows that we made back in uh in, in september you know we're, we're only at 78 percent of the you know of the drop so it, it's ugly as it is it's not you know it, it's not as bad as what we saw here and it, it's it still looks like we could be making an a b c of an a a b c b and now what happens is we're making another ABC to the downside. And, uh, you know, we would need to see, obviously, the uh, the bull step in fairly soon. And this would actually imply that it's a, it's a pretty bullish uh, pattern. So I'm not really, let's say, uh, uh, concerned with whether it's a bullish pattern or not. 
I'm just thinking that from this thing, we could be, you know, this could be your A, B, C. We bounce back up. This may be, let's just say, the first leg of, an, of a larger A. Bounce back up, make a B, and then from there make a C down. And, and to me, what would make sense is we actually come down and test the uh, – the moving average down at 1778 1780 level but that's the bigger picture uh, a bounce back up to, to close some of the gaps we have one open one up at the 2040 level uh, I think there's another one I don't know exactly where it is I'll, I'll try to find it but in any case um, we haven't really seen huge huge moves to the downside without closing gaps and and you can see this is a you know your resistance the first thing the bulls have to do is get it through the 1990 if they do that that's when i start anticipating them coming up to the 2020 2040 but if we take a look at the 15 minute chart this i mean like i said can we go lower absolutely the market's going to do what the market is going to do but this i'm i point out bearish rising wedges all the time and they're very reliable and this is as bullish a falling wedge as you can possibly make right now so it may overshoot a little bit but we have huge bullish divergences in place right here extremely extremely oversold and we're in a pattern that is suggesting that we you know we're going to get a balance that's going to take us someplace up into this 2020 level which is the base to the top of the uh the wedge and since we're here, I mean, why not fill the gap that's up at 2042 or, uh, you know, in that range? So that's the short covering rally that I'm kind of anticipating that takes us back up to the, you know, somewhere into this, uh, the 78% retracement, washes out the shorts, close the gap. And then from there, that's when we, uh, you know, that's when we pick up the pace to the downside. And like I said, seeing the S&P trade someplace down into this, uh, you know, the, the 1780 area would not surprise me. And again, what it would be in a, as a, in a bigger picture is an A, B, and then this would be your wave C that takes us here. But I don't believe that we're making this wave C directly straight down there. They're gonna, they're not, they wouldn't make it that easy for traders on the short side. But may, you know, having a bounce, like forming a different series of ABCs to get there, where this is A, B, and then we make a wave C of a C, that comes someplace down to this level would make the most sense. So right now, um, we, you know, I, I don't know how Monday is going to open. I do believe that we are getting closer to some type of low than uh, – then we are crashing right now just because everybody is set up on it. Uh, we've seen when these short covering rallies do hit, uh, they go in a very, very fast manner. And seeing the S&P trading someplace up into the 2040 area would not surprise me at all next week. So with that, let's see what plays out tomorrow and enjoy the rest of your weekend.